In the context of information technology, a use case is a form of communication. It explains the features and functions that a proposed software application should support from the perspective of the business community. Like customer signs in, a visitor creates profile, and so on. As such, it's a form of uh, requirements that avoids imposing technological limits on how the software is implemented. It's first and foremost a tool for uh, defining what the software should do, not how it's going to be developed. Focus is on the use of the application. Use cases can be and typically are documented or presented in diagrams and in textual descriptions. They represent how the actors are going to interact with, in, uh, with the application in response to a request or an event. Uh, more specifically, the use case represents a form at some level of detail uh, of the interactions amongst the actors that ultimately handle the initiating event in order to achieve a desired business goal or outcome. It's important to recognize that use cases ultimately have to provide value to the initiating actor. The value to the visitor in the visitor creates profile use case is probably that he or she is able to access these restricted features or products and services that are not generally available to casual visitors. Visitor becomes a member, more or less, of an exclusive group that has access to these things. The value is an integral part of every use case description, and it should motivate the actor to interact with the use case to completion. They should be able to start the use case, they should know what they're going to get out of it, and the value should motivate them to actually complete the use case. Uh, as you'll learn in the course, the interactions can be depicted at a wide variety of levels of detail and with a very wide range of associated or related documentation along with it. We're also going to address how important it is to keep the details appropriate to the, uh, to the purpose of the use case at any given point in time. As you can imagine early in the process, Details are going to be pretty skimpy. There's not going to be a whole lot of detail in the use case because you don't know a whole lot yet. Closer you get to handing this use case off to developers to actually implement, the more detailed and specific the description has to get in order for them to be able to do their job. So the levels of details are kind of a moving target, and that's actually one of the areas that Lean is going to play a huge role. Properly used, the use case in the end not only serves the developers, and the business community in communicating. It also provides the basis for acceptance testing to ensure that the developed software or implemented software in the end performs as the author of the use case intended. So more specifically, key uh, elements to think about or the key things to remember when you're thinking about a use case. First and foremost, a use case has to be triggered by an external event of some kind or a request. Somebody has to say something, do something, or something has to happen before the use case can start. Because of that, we're going to spend some time in the course talking about event analysis, how to identify events that will trigger use cases. It's also very, very important to recognize that the use case has to provide a value to one or more actors. Typically, the initiating actor is going to get the most value out of the use case, although that's not entirely always true. That's just the most common component. It shows the interaction between actors, which may, by the way, be people or technology. Actually, an actor can be a person, a device, or an, another application, an API in the world of the web. And uh, it can be a current or proposed application or interaction, but it's going to, its purpose is going to be to handle the event in the manner that the business community dictates as appropriate. It actually shows the sequence of functional steps that are going to take place, or as we talk about in the use case parlance, it is the course of events that has to happen in order to handle the event or the request from when it is received until the desired business outcome has been achieved. So it contains functional requirements and it contains business rules on how we want this uh, application to really handle the situation. Key to it is it is only defining what we call the externally observable behavior of the application. It doesn't get into what the software does specifically. It just says 
It's going to do things like display to the visitor, uh, display uh, the uh, profile screen. It's going to process a, a, a user profile or update the user profile. It's actually, a, because we're talking always about interaction, key thing about it again is the use case is a dialogue between actors, human and technology. Because we've talked about what a use case is, a lean use case fundamentally is a use case that is at the appropriate level of detail that will support imminent decisions, meaning it is uh, detailed enough for whoever is reading or evaluating the use case to be able to make the decision they need to make at this point in time. So we don't want to try to get the use case flushed out in all of its full-blown glory at the beginning of the project, because ultimately this use case may never get into production. Its purpose at this point and each point in the, in the process is to foster communication amongst the diverse audiences that need to understand what the use case is going to be doing. Here, these are the various stakeholders within your organization. Key to the lean use case is making sure that it is at the appropriate level of detail for the person who needs to make a decision at this point, at any given point in time. 